Okay, guys, um, quick news break. There's uh, several headlines that all pertain to each other happening right now. Um, Watching 165 just put up a video or uh, talking about an article. Uh, we're in the Jerusalem Post. Kushner Berkowitz cancel trip to Israel. I'm going to touch on a few things here because there's a bunch of stuff happening right now, today. It is not immediately clear if the peace team is going to reschedule the visit. Washington, Jared Kushner, senior advisor to U.S. President Donald Trump and Avi Berkowitz, special representative for international negotiations, postponed their trip to Israel and will not arrive as previously scheduled, the Jerusalem Post has confirmed. Israel Hayom first reported that the U.S. peace team will not travel to Israel. Instead, the team returned to Washington on Air Force One together with Trump just hours before they were set to land in Tel Aviv. Trump administration official told the Post that the team decided to skip the trip after their flight was delayed due to weather conditions. Hmm. It was not immediately clear if the peace team was going to reschedule the trip, which was supposed to be a crucial step before making the decision whether to roll out the peace plan before Israel's elections in March. Very interesting. Um... Now we have the annexation. White House opposes Jordan Valley annexation before peace plan rollout. Senior White House officials told Channel 13 on Wednesday that the Trump administration is opposed to any unilateral moves by Israel, including annexation or annexing the Jordan Valley, before America rolls out, rolls out its deal of the century peace plan because they don't want war. The United States has made its objections clear and the Israeli government is fully aware of this the officials told Channel 13. If they do it anyway, we could see a war break out. They spoke to the news station amid reports that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was weighing bringing Jordan Valley annexation to the cabinet for a vote on Sunday and then on to the Knesset for ratification on Tuesday. It is likely there is enough support to pass the measure. Netanyahu has spoken of Jordan Valley annexation since the summer and it has been presumed that the Trump administration would support such a move or at the very least not oppose it. He has also promised to apply sovereignty to all Israeli settlements located in Area C of the West Bank and to do so with American approval. Comments made by U.S. officials, particularly U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman, have indicted, indicated that the Trump peace plan could place all Israeli settlements under Israeli sovereignty. The U.S. delegation that includes U.S. Vice President Mike Pence and Trump's peace team Jared Kushner, Avi Berkowitz, we just read about them, and Brian Hook is due in Israel this week. Netanyahu had initially said he would only act on annexation upon formation of a government, but he is under pressure from the right-wing party Yamina, headed by Defense Minister Naftali Bennett, to take action now. To help force the matter, the party has linked annexation with support for Netanyahu's quest for parliamentary immunity, because they are, they're trying to indict him. On Tuesday, Palestinian Authority Ambassador to the UN in New York, uh, Riyad Mansour, told the Security Council that immediate action was needed to halt pending Israel annexation. All five European members of the Council warned Israel against taking such a step. France, Germany, the United Kingdom, Belgium, and Estonia. U.S. Special Coordinator to the Middle East Peace Process, Nikolay uh, Mladenov, tweeted on Wednesday that the annexation of some or all of Area C in the West Bank, if implemented, would deal a devastating blow to the potential of reviving Israel-Palestinian negotiations, advancing regional peace, and the essence of the two-state solution. <sighs> At this point, if anybody makes any kind of move, it's going to mess everything up. Um, here we have a headline, French President Macron orders Israeli police out of French church. I'm not going to read that article. I touched base with it on Breaking Israel News, and it is, uh, he was quite angry with them being there and ordered them to get out. A lot of people think Macron is the Antichrist. I don't know. He has, really doesn't like Jews very much, it seems like. So the world leaders arrive at Ben Gurion Airport. That's happening right now. Um, Netanyahu is asking Macron to join the sanctions against Iran. 
I don't know if he's going to because I've seen some video footage. Macron and the Iranian mullahs are really tight. So is Putin, too. Um, France should sanction Iran in light of its enriching uranium and aggression throughout the Middle East, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told French President Emmanuel Macron on Wednesday. Netanyahu seeks snapback sanctions on Iran per world powers nuclear deal with Tehran. France, the UK, and Germany triggered the agreement's dispute mechanism, which could lead to a return of UN sanctions on Iran. This is Macron's first official visit to Israel. He will be in Jerusalem for two days for the World Holocaust Forum. He will speak at the main memorial ceremony at Yad Vashem on Tuesday or Thursday. Macron also plans to visit a memorial for Jews deported from France during the Holocaust and to speak to a group of hunters of French expats. I wonder if they didn't, uh, Trump and Berkowitz and Kushner didn't go to Israel because he's there right now. Could be. It takes some pretty bad weather to, to not land a plane. Netanyahu met with other leaders in towns for the events, including U.S. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and a bipartisan congressional delegation. He will meet with U.S. Vice President Mike Pence on Thursday. Netanyahu and Macron discussed the situation in Lebanon and Hezbollah's precise missile project, as well as Turkey's involvement in Libya, which was the central topic of an EU foreign ministers meeting earlier this week. In addition, the leaders agreed to establish a strategic dialogue between their countries that will allow us to continue to cooperate on our shared interests, Netanyahu said. This is a very important change in Israeli foreign policy that can help us in things that are very important for national security, the Prime Minister stated. Well, if they go to a two-state solution, it's going to not be very good. Netanyahu also praised Macron for France's request to join the Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum. This has been referred to also as the hook in the jaw, guys. Other members are Cyprus, Egypt, Israel, Greece, Italy, and Jordan, and the U.S. has asked to be a permanent observer. Most of those people were mentioned in the Bible about that stuff, too. <sighs> Netanyahu characterized the breakfast meeting as pleasant, warm, and very productive. The Prime Minister praised Macron for his strong stance against anti-Semitism. Evidently, he likes him. That is also expressed in his visit to Jerusalem. Netanyahu encouraged Macron to act to ensure the murderer of Sarah Halim, uh, Halimi, Halimi, a 65-year-old woman killed in her home by a man yelling, Ahu Akbar, and I killed Satan. The killer claimed insanity, and a court concluded that he is not responsible for his actions because he was too high on drugs. He also asked Macron to petition for the extradition of a man who killed Jews in France and is currently in Ramallah. Macron said he'll look into the matters. Okay. Well, after reading that, I feel like we need to go read this one. French President Macron orders Israeli police out of French church. Um, French President Emmanuel Macron confronted Israel security forces in the old city of Jerusalem when he entered the Church of St. Anne on Wednesday. They're in Jerusalem and he did this? Oh, there's video. Macron ordered the men to leave the site, go outside, the president said to security. I'm sorry, you know the rules. Nobody has to provoke anybody. Let me see if this will work. We know perfectly, everybody knows the rules. I don't like what you did in front of me. Go out, outside. I'm sorry, but we know the rules. Nobody, nobody has to provoke, nobody, okay? We keep... Guys, we had a wonderful work. You did a great job in the city. I do appreciate, guys. Please respect the rules as they are for centuries. They will not change with me. I can tell you. Okay? So everybody respects the rules. Please. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Hope you guys were able to hear that okay. The reason is that the church is legally speaking French held territory. Ah. Um, like an embassy and is under the protection of the French Republic. The Israeli security officers have no more reason to enter the site with him than they would to enter his plane upon his return to France. There is a precedent for this happening. When former President Jacques Chirac visited Jerusalem's old city in 19... Is it Old City or Oak City? 
old city, I think. In 1996, he lost patience with the Israeli security agents who were pressing him to move on, telling one of them that his treatment was a provocation and threatening to get back on his plane. He refused to enter St. Anne until Israeli security left the site. I wonder why they're so big on them leaving, not wanting them to be there. I wonder if, that, if there's something significant to that. I don't know. Hmm. He's very upset about it, though. Okay. I think that was it. Lots of, lots of stuff happening today. January 22nd, all around the world. Wait a minute. PA tells... What is this? PA tells Palestinians the Western Wall belongs only to Muslims. How can you say that? They've already proven that that's the old temple. It's all the block from the old temple. An official, an official from Fatah called upon Palestinians to defend the site with their lives. The Western Wall belongs only to Muslims and we must defend, it must be defended even to the death. Palestinians living in the West Bank were told during a filler piece between programs on official Palestinian Authority TV and in a news article in the official PA newspaper. In a short video broadcast on November 29th, an official PA TV narrator told viewers, the historical documents in the possession of the Palestinians of Jerusalem testify that Jerusalem is a city of Arab origin for thousands of years. Then why are they digging up the city of David right in the middle of it? And its history and culture are Islamic. Since Islam's conquest in the 7th century, the Alberka Wall, the Western Wall, has remained an Islamic waqf and inalienable religious endowment in Islamic law. The Muslims have the absolute right to it, and there is not even one rock there that dates back to the period of King Solomon, as the Jews claim. Actually, they did date it. The actual date and the signature and the, the of the quarryman and the mark for Herod is engraved in those stones. Those are Her 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 Herodian stones. And you can literally take the tour that goes down between the two walls, behind the western wall, and see it in there, engraved in there. They've even found coins under it, too. The voiceover was set to images of daily life within Jerusalem's old city and of the Western Wall, which is part of Judaism's holiest site, the Temple Mount. The wall is a remnant of a large retaining wall built by King Herod to support the mount for the Second Temple. No part of Solomon's first temple remains, although artifacts from that period have been found in the area. According to Palestinian Media Watch, a research institute that studies the PA's messages to its people, the Western Wall is referred to by Muslims as al Burak. I said Burqa before, because the Prophet Muhammad is said to have traveled to Al-Aqsa Mosque and tied his flying horse, named al Burak to a stone or a rock. That's the big old rock underneath the dome. In the 1920s, Arab Mufti Hajj Amin al-Husseini identified that rock as the Western Wall, and Muslims adopted the name for it. No, the rock is up under the dome. The claim to ownership of the site was broadcast again a month later on December 30th, this time in a program titled Reporters in the Field. The program featured the director of the Land Research Center, Jamal al Amle, who said, who said it is known that the Jews have nothing in Jerusalem and Hebron. All archaeological excavations, even the Jewish archaeologists, Archaeologists themselves have proven that there is no existence of their state in this country, no existence of the temple on the mountain where Al-Aqsa Mosque is built. All their history and narrative is a false narrative. And that's completely wrong because you can go over there and you can take the tours and see where they've dug up the old city, they've dug up the old walkway that everybody used to travel on going up and down the mountain. Um, artifacts out the wazoo. Every week they're digging up new artifacts. So none of what they just said is true. Every bit of it's a lie. The Land Research Center received funding from the EU's Peace Building Initiative Program from 2016 to 2019, according to the NGO Monitor. The claim that Jewish links to the land of Israel are false is often repeated on PA TV. That's Palestinian TV. Numerous examples exist of academics and officials denying archaeological evidence of a Jewish presence in the land for millennia. Rather, Palestinians are told that the Jews arrived in Israel as invaders 70 years ago. Why is there written documentation from 2,000 years ago that says the Jews were there? They even have stuff from 3,000 years ago that says the Jews were there. 
This claim allows the Palestinian Authority to push the narrative that my, that the Temple Mount is only holy to Muslims and must be defended even with their lives. On January 18th, the official PA Daily newspaper Al Hayat Al Jadida carried the report that Fatah spokesman uh, Ayad Nassar had said the movement will defend Al Aqsa, whatever the cost. Under the headline, Fatah and the PA Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemned the occupation's invasion of Al Aqsa Mosque. The paper wrote the Fatah movement emphasized that the Israeli occupation forces invasion of the Al Aqsa Mosque yesterday, Friday, January 17th, in the early morning, is an obvious violation of the Islamic holy sites under clear American cover and with no deterrent. Fatah movement spokesman Ayad Nassar noted yesterday, Friday, that this is a real war and ethnic cleansing against our Palestinian people. Yet they gave you an entire state up in Syria and you wouldn't take it. It's land and it's holy sites. The article said, however, the war will not succeed in stealing from our people. It will, it's will to remain and it's standing firm on its land. He added, we will defend our Al-Aqsa Mosque with our holy sites and we will not allow them, Israel, to violate them and pass the occupation's plots to strive to divide the holy city Jerusalem by areas and times, whatever the cost may be. Um, Palestinian Media Watch explained that the reference to dividing Jerusalem by times referred to a law proposed by the Knesset in 2013, which would allow both Jews and Muslims to pray at Temple Mount at different times. Why does that sound so familiar from the Bible? He will seek to change laws and times. Jews are currently allowed access to the site, but are not allowed to pray there. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has stated repeatedly that his government has no intention of changing the current arrangements. The proposed law does not reference any other part of Jerusalem. Friday prayers were broken up by Israeli police at Al-Aqsa on January 17th after a preacher told several hundred worshippers that Jerusalem would soon be the capital of an Islamic caliphate. And the crowd began to chant nationalistic slogans and cause disturbances. There was a big riot there because they were having a big pray in. Okay, so we see all the markers and all the stuff coming up to kick off war. They're trying to take away the one thing the Jews have that they collectively, this is ours and this is where we worship at. They're, they're giving them space on the Temple Mount, but they're down there at that wall. And they're trying to take that away from them now. This is going to kick war off. Guys, the next couple of days, the next two weeks are, should be very interesting. And every time I find a headline to share with you guys, I will bring you up to speed uh, on what's happening over there uh, to keep you guys in the loop. All right? Love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.